Hey, what's going on everybody, and welcome back to Von Bluffton University Dynasty here on NCAA 14. This is John Jay Gaming on the mic, and today we find ourselves on the road playing against the Ball State Cardinals is as we continue through MAC conference play our inaugural season in the FBS with an all walk-on squad. Still looking for our first win of the season. Hopefully we can get it done today. So if you're excited for today's episode, do me a favor and please smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you happen to be brand new as we are on the road to 1K as the recording of this video. With all that being said though, let's go ahead and get into some game action. Alright guys, it is now officially time to get this game underway. The Bluffton Beavers on the road playing against the Ball State Cardinals. We're going to start by kicking off to him and it does not look good. He's got an open lane, one man to beat. He beats that man and he is gone like a girl in a country song. And we just got settled in the chair and we already have a touchdown on the board. Brent Dixon takes it back 97 yards the longest kick return in ncaa history and it gives the ball state cardinals a seven to nothing lead as bluffton went free and out on its next possession the first offensive possession of this ball game and you know it just certainly shows we are not off to as good of a start as we were hoping for as the cardinals are starting to drive downfield third and inches coming up scott slot Going over to the left-hand side, going to Forn. He just doesn't get that many yards, but does end up picking up the first down as he keeps the drive rolling. Going to SWAT once again. Riley, Cherry Riley, going to be able to come in from behind at the last second to make that tackle. But the Ball State Cardinals are still rocking and rolling. It's now two plays later, second and seven, but wait a minute. We have our first turnover on screen. That's not caused... Not a Bluffton turnover. It's a turnover for the other team. Lamont Fields gets the first interception seen in this series. And for now, keeps it 7 to nothing right now. As they'll try again after another free and out. Offense off to a really slow start so far. As there's a big tackle by, looks like, Sean McGee. But Eddie Schlott goes for a gate of 9. Is now old Eddie dropping back going to the right hand side and it's a diving grab by Will Elling. Really able to go out and just reach for the skies it seems like to go for that football. As it goes for a successful first down but on the next play look who it is. Nate McDonald's getting an interception for the Beavers. A second turnover forced by his defense here in the first quarter of play. As the defense does a phenomenal job of pass coverage, Nick McDaniel makes a great uh, behind-the-shoulder catch. And still, we find ourselves only down 7 to nothing. The defense holding strong here as Eddie going to scramble to the right-hand side. Going to nearly pick up the first down himself. A gain of 10. The Cardinals trying to get something going, but the last uh, the possessions that they had on the field have turned into turnovers by the Bluffton defense so we'll see if uh, this Ball State offense can get itself together do a better job of controlling the football as now first and ten coming up Eddie gonna spend Robinson in the motion gonna be a play action play though goes to right hand side to Galloway who has a man he's in the end zone touchdown Cardinals Dominique Galloway beats the defense on that right hand side a great throw and a nice job to also be able to come up in there and make a good tackle or, you know, break some tackles, I should say. As now Ball State has the ball once again. No shocker, another free and out for Bluffton. We have just not moved the ball all day today. It has been a struggle bus in this ball game as the Cardinals continue to drive downfield. Eddie Swat with an 11-yard gain. As now, two plays later, Eddie dropping back, and it's a big hit. Terry Riley comes up in there and gets his first sack of this ball game and brings him back even further, third and long. Can the Bluffton defense come up with another stop? But no! Dominic Galloway beats the defense deep, and Dominic Galloway with his second receiving touchdown this game. 
And Ball State, despite how Bluffton has played defensively, has found themselves up 21 to nothing so far in this game. And it only gets worse as Jack Rodford tries to do a little too much. This might go back for a touchdown, and it does. So the Bluffton offense just struggling. Look at that stat line for Jack Rodford. 2 for 14 in this ball game. You hate to see it. The starting quarterback for this squad really struggling in this game. So now, knowing of the struggle, he's going to try to get to his halfback. Can't even get it to the halfback. That's incomplete, too. The defense for Ball State has been airtight. As we rely on the passing attack to get anything going, and when we're off like we are right now, as we completely miss that throw on the right-hand side, you know, our offense is just completely out of whack. As we need something to happen here, going to try to go for it on the play action. Lemon going to try to get to the sideline. He does get there successfully, though. A gain of 10 yards for the first down. Joe Lemon with probably one of our biggest runs of the day, 10 yards. But let's see if we can get Jack Lem or not Jack Rockford going. We do get the Bill Watkins for one of our first first downs of this entire game. So we're finally across midfield for the first time today. Going to try to throw it over in the middle. It's off the mark. We're trying to target Antoine Hayden. It's incomplete. So now third and long. Need Jack Rockford to make a play. Rockford dropping back. Going to try to scramble to the right. Going to try to throw it to the opposite direction. Could not quite get it there. But don't be shocked if we go for it here. Try to get the first down with Joe Lemon once again. As we'll try to do that scramble. This time could be close. Has one man to beat and he doesn't. Not able to cross the first down marker. Just short. And so it's a turnover on downs. And the Ball State Cardinals will take over. Already with a 28 to nothing lead. Having a very impressive performance. As this has definitely been a far cry, you know, from what we... Actually, not a far cry. You know, we just been riding the struggle bus all season long. What am I saying? As there's an interception that could have been had by Scott Curry. But of course, of course, he stops. And lets the other receiver make a catch. It's now first and ten. Wallace going to go upfield, able to pick up some nice yard. It's defensive lineman. And we stare to make the tackle. But the Cardinals, once again driving. Stop me if you heard that before. Second and three. Going to go deep, and he finds. Tries to find his uh, man, but it is Joe Carey with an interception. His The third turnover caused in this ball game. We would be, I don't know where would we be if it wasn't for this defense right now. Third turnover already as Jack Rodford will throw quickly to Josh Gates, who breaks a tackle. And is able to pick up a first down. Gain of 15 yards. Chains will move for the Beavers. As they're going to be forced to pass the ball a lot more than what I'm personally comfortable with. So we try to throw it upfield. It's overthrown. Trying to get the Kurt White. He was his. He's thrown. Overthrow happens. And it's another turnover for the Beavers. Our second turnover of this game. Greg Hall even. With a second interception. So he has a multi-turnover ball game so far. And it gives the ball right back to the Cardinals midway through the second quarter. Up 28 to nothing already. Bluffton Beavers need to make another stop on defense. And breaking multiple tackles is not how you get it done. Three broken tackles before going out of bounds. You hate to see it. As now, first and ten following that big play. Slot over the middle. Finds Travis Robinson in the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinals. And Ball State. Extends what is already a commanding lead. Already up. And they're up even bigger now. 35 to nothing. Can our offense get anything going? We might have some hope with that 29-yard catch from Antoine Hayden. First down for the Beavers. But we're going to forvert this thing. Someone has to get open, right? We do find Chris McClain. He does get lit up like a Christmas tree. But he does pick up five yards. So one of our better drives so far today. Just got to finish a little bit better as Rockford first to scramble. Going to try to get to Josh Gates and actually gets it there. Josh Gates having to get down there to make the catch and breaks a couple of tackles simultaneously. Goes for a first down for the Beavers. As Josh Rockford is looking a little bit better. 
here in the second quarter. Let's even keep it going. This time cutting it short to Chris McLean. A six-yard gain before taking a shot. As we'll do something a little bit easier now. Second and four. Curls. Rockford going to Brad Carter. The backup tailback. Who is lit up like a Christmas tree but still hangs on to make the catch. You know, for the good throws that we do have, we are doing a good job of making sure there isn't any drops. So I do love that kind of encouragement as we try to throw over in the middle a couple plays later. It is incomplete. But we're a little bit... I don't really trust our kicker here, so we're going to go for it. Plus, a field goal doesn't really help us at this point. So we're going to try to get the touchdown here as we get it to Tyson. Over the middle, Leroy Tyson. 19 yards. And for the first time today, we have a first and goal situation. Can we get it in there? Looking for Antoine Hayden. It's incomplete. So we're going to try to run it back two plays later. Third and goal. Going to hand it off to Chris McClain. Can we get the space needed? Going to McClain. He's just short of the marker. What will the Beavers do in order to save face? The Beavers inexplicably decide to go for the field goal. It is good. But Ball State is up 35-3 to at halftime. Second half of his Ball State game coming very soon. All right, guys. Welcome back to the second half of play. And it was a terrible first half. But one silver lining that we do have is that we do get the ball to start the second half. So we do have, you know, some time to turn things around. You know, maybe we won't win this game, but we can at least try to finish strong here. As Rockford looking around, going to try to get over the middle of Chris McLean, but Watkins reads it. It's not the same safety that intercepted us the first couple of times. But Matt Watkins, the other safety in this Ball State secondary, does pick us off. And so with a 32-point lead, the Ball State Cardinals are going to take over once again. We do try to blitz third and six, and it's a beautiful throw to the right-hand side. Stephen Ford making the catch on the side one, a beautiful throw, being able to get it into the bucket. It's now first and ten. This time, Eddie Swat going to try to scramble. Sean McGee does make the touchdown-saving tackle, but it is still going to be a first and goal situation Ball State looking to get into the end zone quickly following the third turnover forced by the Ball State Cardinals. Let's see if they can get it done. First and goal going to the right-hand side. Going to Wallace and it's another touchdown for the Cardinals. Nate Wallace gets up in there. And now it's 42-3. Not exactly how we wanted to play here today. You know, as we go deep down the field. That's the we intercepted as well. Trying to get to Kurt White. Try to throw it up there so that he can make a play, but it's overthrown. But now we'll try again. Second and ten. Rodford going to scramble to the right-hand side. He's looking. Going to try to throw it to DJ Wogana, but that's nearly intercepted as well. Should have just thrown that thing away. It would have been a lot safer. But now third and ten. Going over the right-hand side. Gets it to Antoine Hayden. First down, Beavers. Gain of 19. Beavers on a roll. Rockford looking, going over the middle, tries to get it over, and it is still incomplete. But now, here we go again, second and ten. Rockford looking, going over the middle, tries to get it to Leroy Tyson, who doesn't make a play on the ball. We're actually very fortunate that Greg Hall didn't get his third interception, because he honestly shouldn't have, but instead we got a third and ten. Rockford will try to make a play once again, but it doesn't look good. Kurt White over the middle, and it, there was a lane for a split second. But it closes quickly as Brian Jackson makes the play. But you know what? We're down by so much. We're going to go for it anyways. We have nothing to lose. Joe Lemon going to actually pick up the first down here with his legs. A 15-yard gain that goes for a really nice first down. As now, once again, first and 10. Rockford going to scramble. Going to try to throw it over the middle. We have a man! And it's Antoine Hayden who holds on to that pass. A huge gain. Beavers might be in business. We might be able to get into the end zone here. You never know. Third and nine. A couple plays later. Gets it to Billy Watkins who spins forward for the first down. And now here we go. First and goal. Can the Beavers get into the end zone? Jack Rodford going to go try to get in the end zone. And he does. Touchdown. Beavers. And even though it is a huge blowout going on right now, these Beavers 
are not going to give up just yet. We may be down by 32, but we get our first touchdown in this ball game. Now let's see if our defense can get this positive momentum as Brent Dixon nearly takes it on the ensuing kickoff. That would have been his second kick return touchdown of this game. So the Cardinals have positive field position to begin. Let's see what they do here. So I'm actually going to scramble and sl slides down in front of Scott Curry. Chef Curry with the shot and he also has the tackle as well. At least recorded. So now, second and four. Wallace is going to try to get to the outside. He does. He got some space as well. He's down the sidelines. No one's going to catch him. Touchdown, Cardinals. Again. Huge play. And now it's 49 to 10. So we had some good feelings after the last Bluffton drive, but those have rapidly disappeared as Ball State was able to answer back quickly. But even though this is turning into a dangerous blowout, loadout, nothing uh nothing to see here. We got a first and ten. Rockford dropping back on a throw to the right hand side. Gets it to Antoine Hayden for a gain of five yards. As the Beavers are slowly but steadily driving downfield. Rodford going to try to scramble out. He sees Sean McGee but overthrows him. A very disappointing throw. He had a man. Mo oh, actually multiple guys open. So now it's third and five. Going to try to call a halfback screen as we get it to Chris McClain. And defender responds very quickly. Just wasn't a very good screen. But we're going to go ahead try one more time to pick up this uh, first down with the legs. Joe Lemica actually throw it. And that right there might be the cue to sim out. I'll see you guys later, man. All right, so no surprises here as once again, Bluff University, we got our ass kicks once again. Losing by a final score of 59 to 10. Most of the scoring being done by Ball State in the first quarter of play. Let's go take a deeper dive in the stats for our guys here today. So this is the first time that we did have three quarterbacks, actually, well, not necessarily three quarterbacks. One of them is a punter, uh, did throw a couple of passes in, was ironically the highest rating today, 79.3 QBR, QB rating, and was one for two for seven yards off of all the fake, fake punts that we did. Starting quarterback though was Jack Rockford, and it was a very tough day at the office, 19 for 49, less than 200 yards, three interceptions. Probably the worst game to date, but, you know, IT Thomas didn't really do any better. He did get to play in the fourth quarter, did have a single completion. He was 0 for 4 as well. Um, so you would love to see IT play a little better given that, you know, he has really struggled in his appearances and didn't really do much in this one either. Running game, we did do our best to try to run the ball a little bit. Our leading rusher, though, was Joe Lemon. He had 34 yards off of three carries. Again, off of fake punts, and that was the best way we can generate any sort of running attack. Um, Jack Rockford did get into the end zone today on the ground. That was the only offensive touchdown that we had. But Chris McQueen had the most carries and didn't do anything with it. Seven carries for a measly three yards. Now the receivers didn't get a lot of attention today, but you know, just couldn't really do much with it. A lot of inaccurate throws. Um, not a lot of drops actually, only three drops, which is, you know, not too shabby for the kind of team that we're at right now. Uh, Chris McClain and Antoine Hayden both lead the team in catches today for, you know, with four catches apiece. But Antoine Hayden though made most of an impact, leading the team in receiving yards, he had 76. Now defensively, I know I mentioned that we gave up 59 points today, but really can't put this on the defense, so it's just one of those things where we were put in a bad spot a lot of the times by our offense, or it was special teams, but the defensive unit itself did come to play, probably the best performance that we had so far. Sean McGee led the team in tackles today, and not only had some tackles, also got to the quarterback as well as had an interception to his name, which is really cool to see. We also got to the quarterback three times, one of course being Sean, but Matt Smith and Terry Ryan, we were also able to get to the quarterback. And then we were able to force plenty of turnovers as well. We had four total turnovers, might be the first time that we've won the turnover battle, although it didn't really help us here. Jim, Justin Carey, Nate McDonald, and Lamont Fields, who actually had our very first turnover of the day, first turnover in this dynasty for us. You know, four total interceptions. 
you know, defense did what it could do, you know, given the talent that we currently have, it's just unfortunate that it still led to another blowout. Okay, so we are now here at the halfway point of our inaugural season. Not too many surprises, we're 0-6, I was hoping to get a win in our first game of the season against FCS, but that simply hasn't happened, you know, but we're already halfway done. You know, it is what it is at, at this point, you know, wanting to be in a much better spot than what we currently are just hasn't necessarily happened, although this is our smallest margin of defeat against an FBS opponent, so I guess we're sort of making progress, you know, when you put it that way. You know, that being said, you know, we're going to play one more game in this episode, play up against Central Michigan, see if we have better chances than, you know, what just been in conspired for us here today. So, without further ado, going to go ahead and get into this game action for the Central Michigan Chippewas. If you're enjoying this Bluff the Dynasty, you know, do me a favor and please smash that like button as well as hit subscribe if you have to be brand new. It helps the channel out and want to try to grow this community as we're on the road to 1K. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go. All right, so second game of this doubleheader. Let's hope for some better days ahead of us because that Ball State game was some hot garbage, but look at this. Chris McClain gets out into the open 17-yard gain. That's exactly how we wanted to start this thing, baby. As we are here, first and 10. Rockford going to drop back the pass. He has a clean pocket for once and does find his man, Josh Gates, for an 8-yard gain. So the bluffed offense looking pretty good, at least a lot better than what we did against Ball State. It's now second and two, gets it to the left-hand side, gets it to Antoine Hayden, who picks up another first down for us, finding ourselves in positive territory. We're just one of those teams that just does a lot better on the road than, you know, what we do at, or at least we do better at home than what we do on the road as we got the incompletion right there. As now we got third and ten, let's see how Jack Rodford responds. Third and ten, going to drop back, going to scramble to the right-hand side, looking for somebody. Gonna just chuck this thing up. We have a couple of guys, but neither of them can get to it. It's an incomplete pass, but we're a heavy underdog here today, man. So you already know it's gonna go down. We're gonna go ahead, fake the punt, see if Joe Lemon can pick up the first down, and we are well short that marker. We do break a tackle, but does not work well for us as three guys came up there. They were certainly ready for it. And so now Central Michigan's going to go ahead and take over. On this first and 10, they throw quick to the right-hand side. They try to do a play-action screen, but must have lost a handle because that did not go anywhere whatsoever. But the Chippewas will try again, second and 10. This time the pass is completed, and it looks like tight end Phillip Benley is the one that made the catch. Broke a tackle from Sean McGee as well. And, you know, it's a first down for the Chippewas. Is now second and 12 going over the middle that's incomplete as well Barrett Baker was there on the coverage and we got ourselves a third and long we might be able to get a stop keep it zero to zero right now at least that's what I would love to see as Venetary finds another McLean not related to Chris McLean as a Danny McLean made the catch the starting tailback for the Chippewas for a gain of 15 yards and it goes for third and, you know, just keep them moving the chain zone for the Chippewas as they get another first down courtesy of Philip Bentley. It's him and Danny McLean, you know, killing the Beavers on defense right now. As they are taking a little bit while, you know, a very lo much longer drive as they try to throw it over in the middle. That's incomplete. That actually could have been a touchdown. They would have caught in that. But instead, it's second and ten. Valentini dropping to the left-hand side. Going to try to throw it. To Philip Bentley is complete, able to pick up some good yards in the process. And now we got a seven yard gain. So now, third and short. Let's see what we can make happen here. Third and short. Gotta make something happen here on the quarterback keeper. He's looking around, he's desperately looking for space, but we finally bring him down. I thought he was gonna somehow find a way to sneak in there. But that didn't happen, and they only had to settle for a field goal. So you'll love to see it. Only down three to nothing. As we could try to throw it over the middle to Bill Watkins. What a diving grab. Huge play for the Beavers. Maybe not necessarily in yardage. But we, you know, just a huge catch that keeps the drive going. 
You know, and now at that point, you know, we just got to see if we can get something to happen on this drive. We can't basically go free and out after that. A second and ten, going to the left-hand side, going to DJ. Well, got it! Who fumbles the football? Williams is gone and picks it up. And it's a turnover for the Beavers. And so another promising drive ends in a turnover. And so now the Central Michigan offense taking over. They might score on the very first play. As it looks like Barrett Baker does come in at the very last second. Makes the, the tackle. Now here we go. First and goal again. This time to Danny McLean. Second time. Breaks a tackle. No one else is there as no one can get off their blocks and gets into the end zone. Touchdown Central Michigan. You already know that they are happy about that. As now ensuing possession for the Bluffton Beavers comes on. Down by multiple possessions already. Let's see how we respond. Rockford. Look at he takes a hit. And it's fumbled. Central Michigan recovers. And they return it for a touchdown. What the heck? Jack Rockford desperately looking. Couldn't throw it away because he was in the pocket. Just trying to do too much. Fumbles the football. And now, blink of an eye, 17 to nothing as that was batted down the line of scrimmage as well. That was, uh, you know, just, just not a good time. Just straight up not having a good time right now. As now, third and 13, Rockford going to go ahead and try to scramble. He's going to throw it deep. He has DJ Logana who makes the leaping grab. Able to come back and get that football 39 yards. As the Beavers are driving, Rockford. Scrambling to the right, gets it to his backup tailback, and Brett Carter makes a couple man miss. And it's a 24 yard gain. As the Beavers look to get on the board for the first time, let's see if we can do it. Kurt White, it's just a couple yards shy. 10 yard gain, but a first and goal situation coming up for the Beavers. Let's see if we got what it takes to get in the end zone as we scramble. Rockford going to go over the middle, gets it to Josh Gates. Touchdown, Beavers. Jack Rockford with a tight throw to Josh Gates, trusting his man one-on-one -on -one and makes it happen. And the Beavers cut this thing down to 10 and even better. They get the ball back without allowing any points, so it's still a 10-point game. So let's see if the Beavers have what it takes to make this a one-score game. That would be absolutely huge for us to pull off and potential upset. Be great for our program for sure. It's now second and four. Going to try to throw a deep throw to the Josh Gates on the right-hand side. Double coverage, but does not matter. Still makes the catch anyways. It's now first and goal. Going to Tommy Marks this time, who stumbles, but does get across the first down marker regardless. His first catch of the game goes for 11 yards. Now the Beavers are on the 35. Rockford gonna throw to the right hand side gets to the Josh Gates again now in the red zone thanks to that play and the Bluffton offense is at close to peak performance right now as Rockford tries to throw that slant again but this time pressure gets home and forces the incompletion so now third and ten coming up Rockford dropping back the pass gonna scramble to the right hand side gonna try to throw it he had a man but was hit and because he was hit, he, you know, couldn't get to his guy. And so now 4th and 10, going to go for it here. Rockford looking, going over the middle, and it's Antoine Hayden. Touchdown, Beavers. Antoine Hayden with a nice over-the-shoulder grab. And midway through of his second quarter, it is only a three-point game right now. As now it's first and ten again. Valentini going to get. Get gets breaks a tackle, but Sean McGee comes up in there and makes a play. 25-yard gain. If we can keep these guys out of the end zone, we could keep keep this a one-score game. And who knows what happens in his last few minutes of the first half if we do force a short completion. But there is a flag on the play. It's on us. And it's Lamont Fields. Who is guilty of the face mask. Not necessary. And giving up 15 yards.
But we do get him to the third and long, though. Let's see if we can get him off the field. Valentini trying to throw it deep. He has a couple of guys, but it's overthrown between the two receivers. And so if a Chippewas settle for a field goal once again, it's only a six-point deficit as there's another big throw over in the middle to Tommy Marks. Gain of 29 on that one. As that is a great throw once again. Ronford continuing to drive, tries to get it to Kurt White. It's nearly intercepted. But instead, it's incomplete. He drops the pass. Second and 10 coming up. Rockford going over in the middle to Chris McLean for a six yard gain. Third down coming up. Huge play for the Beavers. Still got two timeouts, only need four yards. Don't need nothing crazy here. Third and four going to DJ. Who makes the catch and gets another first down. Beavers continue to drive. Rockford, minute left, going to Kurt White. He had his man, but he drops it. Incomplete pass. So we got to run it back from the 30-yard line. Second and 10. Rockford tries to get it out, but is incomplete. Takes a sh huge shot as well. But he will get himself back up. Third and 10 now. Let's see if we can make it happen. Rodford takes the snap. Gonna try to throw it to the right hand side, but it's intercepted. Did not get enough velocity on the football, and we pay for it. It actually wasn't a terrible decision by Rockford, but just did not have the arm talent to complete that throw. And so Tony Williams taking advantage of that, getting an interception. And now it turns into making sure that no damage is done. From potentially taking the lead, from potentially going to a two-score game. That would be devastating if they can get into the end zone on this drive. As McLean has some space and actually somehow gets to the first down marker despite very good coverage. So now, two plays later, second and nine. Valenti going to drop back, but he gets lit up like a Christmas tree as Terry Riley beats his man. And they're going to call their guys to the line of scrimmage quickly. They only have one timeout. They want to save it as much as possible. Third and long. Let's see if the Beavers can make a stand. It's a short throw. Sean McGee can't make the tackle. Somehow gets out of there. Could be a touchdown. John Carey, the last line of defense. It makes the tackle. And so one more play left potentially before the end of this first half. Could get into the end zone, but is sacked behind the line of scrimmage. And so the Chippewas had to sell for a field goal, but it's a two-score game. Central Michigan up 23 to 14, second half coming very soon. So welcome back to the second half of, you know, the second game of this episode. We're actually doing a lot better this time around than in the first game where we were absolutely blown out of the sky. But right now it's only a nine point game. This game could still go to anybody, you know, depending on how things go on defense. As Valentin going over the middle, going to keep it on the quarterback Option faked it to the halfback to Danny McLean and Valentine gonna keep it himself for a huge first down. As now, first and ten, Valentine dropping back on a throw to the left hand side, and it's a, almost a nice toe touch grab, but it is broken up by Antoine Hayden, I believe. And now, second and ten, they're gonna try to run it once again. John Kerry does come in and make the tackle finally. Sean McGee was struggling to bring him down and needed some help. So now, third and five. Let's see if we can get him off the field once again. Tight end goes into motion. Bounty dropping back, throwing it over the middle, but Javon Gant could not get there as Sean McGee was ready for it. Lit him like, like a Christmas tree. And still, it's only a 12-point game right now. But we do have to go free and out, so... Need our defense to step up once again. McGee can't make the tackle, however, and does get across midfield for a good first down. So now, here we go. First and 10, following the big run. It's a play action. Looking, going to try to scramble. Gets through. Gap integrity was simply not there on that one. There was just a huge hole for Valentin to try to run through. So here we go again. Another first and 10. Valentin dropping back this time throwing it but can't make the grab number 14 couldn't it was broken up So now second and ten Valentin dropping back once again going over the middle finds Bentley and is immediately brought down But still is able to hold on to the football 
Third and short coming up for the Chippewas. And if we can get a stop, this will remain a two-score game. Let's see if we can get it done. Third and three. Gant goes into motion. Valentin dropping back. Got a man at Bentley. Only one man left to beat as Barrett Baker just narrowly makes the tackle. And so is able to turn that into a touchdown on the next play. But there might be a flag on the play. But, of course, offsides. Terry Riley, penalty is of course going to be declined. Not going to turn down six points for that. So it's 33 to 14, starting to pull away a little bit. Let's see how this Bluffton offense can respond as Rockford will actually scramble out. He's got a couple of blockers, but neither of them could make a block for him. But still a good eight-yard gain and did not fumble the football. You love to see that from your quarterback. As now, second and two. Rockford going to go short to Antoine Hayden. He's got the short crossing round, was able to pick up eight yards. Moves the chains for the Beavers. As Rockford and company looking to continue to drive. Rockford over the middle. Josh Gates and huge first down, 14 yard gain on that one. You love to see that from your guys. And here we go, another first and 10 coming up. Rockford dropping back, gonna go over to left from the middle, get it to Kurt White. Kurt White able to come up in there and make another first down. Kurt White had a really strong start to the season, but has fizzled out a little bit. Only with three catches, 23 yards. As we are closing in on the end of the third quarter, it's a 19-point deficit. But, I mean, we're not getting blown out. So, even if we don't win this game, I do love the progress that we are certainly showing right now. Because that has not been the case as of late. As now, third and seven, a couple plays later. Rockford going to go to DJ Wogana, who's open and walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Beavers. You love the progression that has been seen overall by this football team as DJ Wogana finds the end zone. And I believe this is ties the most points that we have scored against an FBS opponent. It's either that or North Carolina game. Let me know down in the comments, you know, if I score more than 21 points or not, or even go, or even again, go watch that episode if you haven't already. As we get, you know, this Chippewa drive to still take care of, we ain't gonna stop. This game is definitely not over. You know, a lot can happen in five and a half minutes if it stays or a two score game. As Valentin throws to the right hand side, gets it to Antonio Minor. He immediately steps out of bounds and gets to the first down. Is now first and 10. Valentin going over to Danny McLean, who's able to spin away from a couple of the defenders and finally falls down, you know, above a bunch of Bluffton guys. Second and three now coming up. We'll see if they run the football once again, and they will this time with Nick Miner, who's got some blocks. He's got an open lane, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown, Chippewas. Another score for Central Michigan, making it 40-21. to so, again, didn't know we are going to win this game. It was definitely a long shot. But at least let's see if we can finish strong here. DJ Wogana breaks one tackle and does pick up seven yards. But looks like he's hurt. Hopefully he's okay. Nothing like too serious, I hope. As Rockford tries to throw over the sideline. Goes to Antoine Hayden, who picks up 15 and gets out of bounds immediately. That will help us save some time at the very least. That's now first and 10. Rockford. Dropping back, facing some pressure, gets it to DJ, who makes a huge grab and then fumbles the ball. But thankfully, a fumble out of bounds. Can't afford any more turnovers right now, as we're definitely a long shot to win this game at this point. We need all the help that we can get right now, as Rockford going to try to send this one deep, and it's just short. We had a man in the corner of the end zone, but we couldn't get it there. And so we'll try again. Second and 10. Going over in the middle. Tries to get it to Jefferson. Number 89 for the Bluffton Beavers. But he drops it. And so that's going to lead to a third and long coming up. And we got a couple of guys that aren't wide receivers in there. Like I said, we're pretty thin right now as that's almost intercepted. Ben Anderson got his hands on it. But you best believe we're going to go for it here. Fourth and 10. Rockford in the shotgun. Five wide set. Rodford going for Bill Watkins and tries to leap for it and can't quite make the grab. A turnover on downs 
And so that's how this game is going to end. Central Michigan does win this game by a final score of 40 to 21. But it's our smallest margin of defeat so far this season. And I'm certainly happy with the progress that we made as a football team in the first season of this NCAA 14 series, despite playing with a bunch of walk-ons and being rated 25 overall. But even though we lost this game, though, we ended up losing 40-21. to I felt very encouraged by this game, actually. Unlike many of the games that we played this year, we were actually very competitive. You know, we let it get away from us a little bit in the, in the second half, but, you know, we were in this game for a long period of time, and I love the direction that we're going. I feel like I'm starting to figure out how to play with this team, and, you know, maybe we could turn around and you'll continue to show progress now this is the stats for today's game jack rodford had to start for us today gunslinger once again 27 for 45 had 367 yards and three touchdowns did have multiple picks but one of them was at the very end of the game that a drive that i didn't really bother to show the game was out of hand anyways and it was off of hail mary running game though i'm pretty sure we had negative yards and it showed uh jack rodford is the main culprit of that got sacked quite a few times even lost a fumble which did turn into a Central Michigan touchdown. Chris McLean was our leading rusher today with a grand total of 11 yards, and he did it off of 10 carries. Now, for the receivers, one, there are a few guys that got into the end zone today. Most notable is DJ Welgana, who had a heck of a ball game here today. Six catches for 106 yards and a touchdown and did not have a single drop, which is very promising. Josh Gates also had a pretty good showing himself. He had five catches for 52 yards and also found the end zone as well. Then Antoine Hayden found the end zone too. He had four catches for 47 yards. Stepping in as a backup receiver, he plays corner, you know, and he might have a future wide receiver too. too. Who knows? Defensively, a lot of our tackles came from our secondary, unfortunately, which is usually not a good sign, but Barry Baker, you know, made the most of it, though. He had nine total tackles today, two of which for a loss and also had a sack as well. We did not get to this quarterback, but Terry Riley was also a guy that got to this QB and was able to sack him. He didn't do much else, however. He only had two tackles and that one TFL that was a sack other than that. So with that game all said and done, we are now officially past the halfway point of the season. And what I want to do for you guys is I want to bring a recruiting special, show you the notable guys that Bluffton University is going after in year one, as well as, you know, take, take a look at some other guys that maybe won't get as much hype but can still help out the team right away, as well as take a look at the pipeline states, figure out what we can do going forward trying to build this football team. So hopefully you guys are ready for the season one recruiting special. And if you enjoyed today's doubleheader, do me a favor and please smash that like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you do happen to be brand new. This is John Jay Gaming on the mic, hoping that you guys are all out there having a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.